team. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Procurement League. Welcoming you both uh, to talk about the first ever healthcare procurement summit in Europe. This is really, really exciting for us. So I'm sure this is super exciting for both of you. Um, I'm going to quickly introduce myself uh, and then I'm going to hand it over to both of you to just kind of get us going on what got you in this space. So I'm Devangana. Um, I manage Asia community engagement for Procurement League. I spend 60% of my time working with kids on the spectrum of autism to push them into giftedness. So this, this summit is extra special for me because I'm all things neuroscience and what's happening in medicine and technology and all of that. So this is, this is fabulous. Um, I then spend the rest of my time with Procurement League and a few more uh, little startups strategically advising them. So, so this is fabulous. Thank you for doing this. Um, I'm now going to let both of you tell me about like what got you in the space, the really interesting space of healthcare procurement and, and what that really means to you. So Elisa, you want to start us off? Absolutely. Well, thank you, Devangana, um, first of all, for having us, um, of um, giving us the possibility of sharing here what excites us, um, honestly, since a couple of months now, um, to really get that going. Um, so I'm very happy being here, um, both myself and um, Dani, having that space um, to share. So my name is Elisa, and um, I wanted to start off um, a bit with how I see myself in the world um, in the sense of um, being a translator, being a connector and also a visionary and really believing, and as this is actually how I came to procurement in the power of ecosystems that are the core, I would say, in terms of my uh, view in the world to drive impact and change. Um, how does it actually mean that I ended up um, in the space of healthcare procurement? And that I would see as pure curiosity and really the urge for me to transform systems by building, and this is why I started off with how I see myself in the world, building interconnected communities and networks that have the aim to make healthcare one more accessible and on the other also more affordable. So with that said, and with that uh, tiny introduction three years ago, um, before starting to build the Health Procure Association alongside Dieter Zoffel, who is the founder of the um, organization, I must admit I have been an alien to procurement. And um, with a background in intercultural studies and business management, I kind of accidentally stepped into the healthcare scene, which is now more than 13 years ago. Um, and since then, I have been well, enjoying very different roles internationally working across the healthcare field from different angles like clinical trial management in a very corporate environment, patient recruitment in a startup uh, mode, and also taking on the perspective from the hospital side of view by running digitalization projects. So having had the chance over the past three years to dive into the topic of healthcare procurement more deeply and learn about the challenges, but also see the possibilities, to me, it really comes down to the importance to rethink healthcare procurement and with that the role it plays within um, the organization. And with that, um, while well, being the CEO nowadays of healthcare um, procurement in the Association of Health Procurement, that really drives me to rethink that and actually being able to transform that in a very ecosystemic way of doing. That's the way how I ended up in healthcare procurement. It's really interesting. Thank you for sharing that, Arisa. Excited to talk more. Uh, Danny, would you like to go next? Yes, yes, and I'm hearing to, to Elisa, it is really, really interesting to hear her and to, to listen what is really, uh, what makes procurement happy to somebody. It is really, really unbelievable. I am an economist as, as a basic, and uh, I am uh, since four years now a, a, a real passionate from, from procurer and from procurement. And uh, but my, my, my life and my, my vita is absolutely uh, different. I have started in the logistics sector and I've worked for more than 10 years in the logistics sector and afterwards in the media sector and the kickoff <clears throat> in the healthcare sector because I have been more than 10 years CEO from a hospital uh, has, has a lot to do with the, 
was a special context of the healthcare sector, the broad ecosystem where Elisa is also talking about between <clears throat> medicine and patients and technology and politics and industry and global and local and macro, meso, micro, you, are, you have really so a lot of joysticks in hands where you can move forward. This is really particular in, in our healthcare sector and a particularity inside of this sector, this is, this is procurement. Procurement is, is quite, quite special. And if we have a look from the, uh, from the uh, benefit in, and, and loss analysis from a hospital, there's, there's really around about 30% or more who are concerned by procurement who are concerned by things who have to be involved. It's medicine, it's medical devices, investment, it's equipment, it's maintenance, it's catering, cleaning, all these things. This is unbelievably interesting. And you have so a lot of intersections with different sectors who are not other sector, but you are making, they are making ideas about our sector. And when you are interested, when you are really interested on innovation, on the questions we are living for the moment, lessons learned from COVID, the supply chain discussion, the sustainability, sustainability discussion, the reindustrialization discussion, the digitalization discussion. Inside of the healthcare sector, you can really, really find an entry report via procurement. And that's why it is so interesting. And since five years now, I am the, the, the CEO from Mercure Hosp in Belgium. Mercure Hosp is the, the, the sort of GPO procurement center in form of a mutualization of the Wallonian and the Brussels hospitals. And since last year, I am chairman from the EPA. EPA is European Healthcare Public Procurement Association, who is one of the two organizers. And so I am not only in Belgium and only in our sector well connected, but also in Europe well connected. Elisa from her side with Health Pro Europe, we from our side via the associations on, on EPA. And that's why we, we, we have put our forces together to, 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 to do really this, really this uh, exciting project uh, uh, to do this summit in Brussels in September. Wow, this is, this, is, this is the best combination that we could have wanted for something like this. So, so I'm excited to jump into the questions because uh, I'm excited to hear your answers. Yeah. So, so I spend a lot of time reading all things health, all things technology, everything in the healthcare space online. So, you know, every big organization and all of that, right? So why this summer, Elisa and Danny, there's a lot of healthcare storytelling that goes on single, like one person is going to build a whole story around healthcare, their story of recovery, their stories. Um, they're big celebrities, big brand endorsements, big organizations making big healthcare claims. We live in India, where there's this whole culture of yoga and, you know, Ayurvedic healing and all of that. Um, there's, it's, it's interesting to hear different stories. Sometimes I see something could be true, something could be interesting. How do you as healthcare procurement people see all of this? And, and, and what would we get to see in the summit which would be different from all the healthcare noise that we see everywhere floating around. Hmm. Let me let me try to put some um, some thoughts um, together for that, and Danny, jump in um, where you want to add in and share your uh, ideas. Well, first of all, um, I would say we're different, and maybe that is an answer everyone would give because we all want to be a bit different. But why I see ourselves different is because we're creating an event which I would say is a first in time event that really brings together at the European scale the buyers from the healthcare scene and moreover gives a stage to the buyers to share their voice and that to me is different and with the pandemic bringing long-time challenges in the healthcare um, systems more to the surface and making them therefore more visible, I think it even becomes more obvious to reshape healthcare systems and apply the lessons learned. And from my perspective, this is exactly where we need to anchor on. So this is the procurement role. This is where money decisions are being made. And 
Therefore, I believe that this is where the responsibility goes to actually create more awareness and visibility around the importance of this function. And therefore, we are offering the summit, and I would rather say like as a kickoff to really think more European, to create these networks, to learn from each other and to really leverage um, the collaboration because we're not alone in this. And I think like giving the voice to the buyers is so important. Um, as you mentioned, Devangana, there is so much noise out there and I think we're missing the voice of the procurer. So this is what we want to bring forward. One one of the topics you have uh, you have given for this for this interview was also uh, what is what is uh, what are the topics a procurer can extract from uh, from, from this summit and um, I, I want to, to add some ideas on 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 on, on that what Elisa said you, you must you must really know that it is our greatest challenge for the summit is to bring the procurers to Brussels. The procurers don't have the culture to move, don't have the culture to communicate, don't have the culture to, 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 to work in team. That has to do with a very complex situation uh, of, uh, of the structure from a hospital. They have to deal with industry. We have to, to, to look to, uh, to the, 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 the sea level, logically. They have to discuss with Dutch doctors about their needs. They have to discuss with, uh, uh, with, with, uh, with nurses and, and, and I will say a little bit the, the, the social aspect also from, from a hospital. Huh? And, and so they are so busy inside of their structure that they have absolutely not the culture to have, a, to have an exchange, even not in, inside of a, of, a, of a hospital with different uh, um, uh, daughter companies or, 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 or different, uh, different localizations. So it is so difficult to bring procurers together in, in, in one country and we are doing it on European level. But we are convinced that it is also the only, the only common topic of a, of a procurer, the common topic is to make tenders. And if you are working in the, in the, in the public hospital area and 80, 85% of all European hospitals are public hospitals, you have to work inside of the European tender law. And this is a common denominator where we are working on. And this is our starting point. And for being clear, logically, we must have vision. We must discuss about future. We, we have to see what happens with uh, healthcare procurement in 10, 15 years. Yes. But what's really important is to bring the guys around the table and to say, okay, what are your experience? What you have learned on? What uh, what are uh, what are answers on different questions we are all we are all facing on all days in our practical way? And our greatest success will be if we are going back on Thursday to their to their hospitals after two days of discussion that they have one, two, three, four concrete topics where they can say, okay, these are things I can apply uh, without a great uh, transformation of my process inside of my procurement of, of hospitals. And, and this is this is important. Huh? And, and then other things are linked to this, uh, to, to extract ah, uh, uh, innovation ideas and, and uh, optimization from process and legal aspects and uh, what are the, 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 the criteria for uh, to criteria to put in a tender for having more more, more sustainable discussion and, and so on and so on. Yes, okay, these are these are all the things we want to put together. And then you have the discussion with uh, EU uh, European representatives or representatives from the European Union and so on and so on. Yes, logically. So do you have also to discuss about this, this macro aspects, uh, but this is the real challenge of our Congress. The challenge is less the, the topic or the content, the challenge is the human resources challenge to bring them to Brussels and to develop a culture from exchange of knowledge for people who are not these ability, ability to do it.
sorry, we lost, we lost you for the last three seconds, but I heard uh, about you talking about the ability and the human resource uh, side of it. And I, I think that, I mean, it can be a very complicated, almost frustrating space sometimes for many people who are trying to work hard in the healthcare space and they don't know where to go, what to do, how to navigate it. Um, what was really standing out to me, Elisa, when you all sent me the you know, material was the three pillars that you mentioned, which is uh, the three pillars of transparency, digitization, and sustainability. And those sound very solid. Um, as, as if I were in this space, that is something I would look for definitely. And I don't think I'd look beyond that. How would you, how would this be embodied in the summit and, and what efforts are both of you putting in and, you know, your team's putting in to make sure these three elements come away? Hmm. I mean, first of all, for us, these three pillars, um, will develop to be way more than the core of the summit, but it's rather like the essence of our activities. So not only re related to the summit, but to actually what we're doing as associations and where we want to see a change. And moreover, I would say that these three pillars resemble how we as associations see and understand procurement functions in healthcare and where these need to evolve to and transform into. So this is based first of all, and this is like why we have chosen it as a pillar, like creating the transparency because this is the foundation and to everything else by then using digital tools, creating um, systems, um, technology um, systems to improve efficiency of procurement tasks and therefore also then make better use of all the data that surrounds us to truly well powerful and valuable have decision making processes that then lead into more sustainable procurement practices. So this is how we see and therefore have chosen these three pillars also for like main topics of the summit, that this is the way forward to shape the future of sustainable healthcare organizations. And due to the fact that we see that only happen with procurement playing an, an important role in that whole um, process as procurement does in other industries, this for us is key actually of leveling procurement to these three different um, pillars to also run a way more strategic function um, in healthcare organizations. And how we transfer that and how we um, translate that into the summit is that we have created, um, as Dani said before, yes, visionary um, keynote speeches, engaging um, roundtable um, discussion, but moreover also have based our different workshop tracks where it's really about practicalities, where it's really about doing. So we're moving away, I would say from the buzzwords into what does it really mean and how can we actually implement these practices and um, different um, activities into our organization with um, very hands-on use cases. So this guided us through um, the creation of the program and also trying to find very interesting projects, um, exciting organizations that have been going that um, path to share what they have been doing, to spread the word of how that can look like and also how it shouldn't look like to really, I would say foster that exchange of best practices also Danny mentioned before to create that community around healthcare procurement to learn from each other and then to adopt the learnings into um, well national context of healthcare system as we know in all the different European um, countries there is a different way of dealing with it nevertheless seeing um, as an outcome of different conversations and projects we have been um, involved in the challenges are very similar so let's put the heads together um, and really um, support each other like how to tackle these on a, on a more national level yeah no that's great it's it's hard work but it's it sounds like it's in the right to in the right direction uh danny would you have anything to add about these three pillars and you know how can we as in the health care procurement space bring these to life do you have any other ideas to add and I'm, I'm almost the most curious about the digitization part because that's where we can go totally, you know, digital virality is so easy that how do we manage 
digitization in the healthcare space is something that I'm always curious about. Simple question, difficult answer. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it is, it is some topics. First topic is uh, digitalization is, um, to be honest, uh, 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 a keyword in, in every sector. But a lot of sectors are much more digitalized than the healthcare sector, you must know it. Uh, the retail sector, the media sector, you know it very well. And, and we are really a little bit people of the last century, to, to be really honest. Huh? And we have, to, we have to invest in it. But second point, it is also a difficult topic because you have to do with data, patient data, GDPR discussion, who is the owner of data? What can you do with data? And data is a huge, huge business. And we can at the end, who can at the end of the of the of the day benefits or tier the benefits of these of these data? And so you you have been much more clear on an ethical way with data, with digitalization in our sector than in all other sectors. And now we are talking here about digitalization in the procurement sector. And we have to develop, and this is one of the great topics, and that's why, of, it's why this is one of the three topics of our, of our summit. We, we, we have to become much more mature in our sector to say, aha, procurement data are healthcare data, but are not patient data. And in our in our segment inside of the of the of the healthcare sector, there are enormous and really enormous potentialities to develop uh, our our sector with data who are coming out from procurement and who are absolute neutral, who are not linked to persons who are absolutely, but they give they give trends, they, they, they give they give information. And I can say to you, the data we receive from the different institutions are not good, are not uh, uh, threatened in a, in a professional way, uh, are not are not complete, are, are absolutely difficult to threaten. And what we see that if we want to have clear data for other daily work, for do a tender, for make procurement, for see the evolution and so on and so on, we need to, to, to work together with industry. This is okay, but it has its limits. And to become much more professional and to have the, the click also that we need not only to, to buy, but also to, to control what happens during a buying period. And the buying period, uh, it is not only a one shot, yes, a, a radiologic equipment is, is, is a one shot, huh? but uh, buying a molecule, buying a device, buying consumables is a regular task huh? to do it once per week, once per day, once per month, I don't know what, in a certain price, in certain quantities, in a certain lo logistic uh, condition. And to see how it develops and which uh, service agreements you are doing with the suppliers and uh, which, uh, and I come back to the other topics, sustainable aspects, transparent aspects, uh, supply chain aspects, uh, uh, where the, the footprint discussion, all these things are coming inside, but you can't analyze them when you don't have correct data. And that's why we have done this data discussion so high at the level from this uh, summit. Yeah, amazing. Thank you both of you. Uh, and thank you for like, putting this thing together because this sounds uh, like a lot of work. Um, so, so tell me more about, uh, you know, like if somebody's, if you know, if you had to give some tips to a healthcare worker or a healthcare procurement professional uh, to make most of the summit, because there's, it looks like there's a lot going on. Um, how, how should somebody who is either coming to, you know, present something or procure, like, like how should whoever is attending make the most of the summit? Sorry, can I add another layer of a question here? And, no, and, of course. And, and, what, and, and what are you, 
so so i'm 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 a personally a healthcare skeptic and that's what i'm curious about how did how will you ensure whoever is coming you know you know what is their credibility what kind of uh, you know licensure credibility um you know background are they experience background uh, are they coming from you know just to ensure that the transparency sustainability pillars are there um yeah mm -hmm. yes yes i i am i understand i understand your question and it is so difficult to answer why because it is the first pan european uh, uh, procurement summit. We are doing it for the first time. And uh, one of the pitinesses of our sector is that uh, procurement make not part of a uh, board of directors. They doesn't exist in our sector a, C, a chief procurement officer, a CPO. Uh, uh, it is the procurement is represented by the operational officers, finance officer, technical officer, CEO, I don't know who, but there is not like in the uh, automobile industry or in, in uh, chemistry industry and so on, a real procurement officer. This is this is this is the first remark. The second remark is so we have to 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 push our sector and to bring it in contact with our whole ecosystem and really also with domains who are absolutely not familiar for procurers example the academic world what we have done with our with our summit uh, we have tried to bring together the procurement who is at the end of the day and that in his basic activity a commercial activity okay and we have a commercial activity in a social sector and he is linked but only via the doctors to the academic world so the academic activity is very far from the procurement but we have brought them on our stage we have we have we we we, we are doing for the moment um, a competition for three different awards we want procurement awards but procurement awards about innovation, about sustainability, about uh, digitalization, transparency, and uh, these these three awards are analyzed, proposed, and so on and so on. Not by us, by a scientific board, and the scientific board is composed by uh, by, by by academics. Do you understand? And so we want to 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 become more and more also to to have more and more a, a serious. Um, a foundation who is coming also with a clear academic reflection about what we are doing and what what we are not doing the second one is that all the all the, 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 the these these great topics we have we have put in our title transparency digitalization sustainability and so on we want to beat we want to live it we want to 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 share it during our congress and so we have also looked for our partners our sponsors we have looked to our uh, our our panel discussion partners we have we we are working together with the european innovation council with each aliens and so on and so on all these these partners are partners who are thinking in the same direction like we are doing it and i think this will be at the end of the day uh, the the guarantee again the the patchwork from all different topics we are bringing together we are bringing we will bring together in this in this in this summit uh, will be so great and so solid that uh, the seriousness of this congress will be underlined by his participants and his people on stage Amazing. Thank you for explaining that so clearly and so well. Elisa, do you have anything to add? I would just um, stress, um, because I think it's a beautiful way of how to put it, it's really a patchwork. So it's really um, a puzzle piece we're putting here together, always with the focus and the perspective on shining the lights of the procurers. So we're looking from the lens of the procurers and with that perspective, we're putting together um, the patchwork, I would say, to so to see like what is in there to make that healthcare procurement actually 
or in the future become a CPO function in healthcare organizations. So that is like, a, I would say a very big ambition and vision, but in order to achieve that, this is where we need to professionalize. And this is also where we need to extend the skill sets and extend um, the diversity of procurement teams in order to actually go that step and be more strategic in that sense. Amazing, thank you so much for sharing that. So, so my next question, which I am, I mean, we're, we're all from different countries and we're, you know, we, we know how healthcare and technology and all of this works differently in different places. And I'm guessing in the summit, you're gonna have people from across Europe, but maybe even like different parts of the world. How do you see an innovation or, you know, some, some kind of a healthcare uh, innovation invention, something which is presented at the summit? How do you see the transla transal translatability of that in other countries? And, you know, have you, have you all thought about, you know, healthcare and globalization? How does that work? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, my wish um, is honestly that the summit offers exactly that, namely having the approach shared from different perspectives, because I think this is the hmm, this is the fund of where we can learn from, because different perspectives offer different solutions. And I think this is also hmm, the source of trying to start to think out of the box and come up with creative solutions, because no country is alike. As I said before, I believe we have similar challenges, but I think the solutions look different due to national systems, cultural aspects, due to legislation and so on. So I think that exactly by showcasing the different views of countries and the countries having shared their activities within the country sessions we have been setting up to actually shed the light on different regions, um, particularly, um, I must say, from Europe, due to the fact that we wanted to initiate the pan-European um, healthcare procurement community. So I think next to having the country sessions group regions and have local networks um, actually foster um, and create interaction, I think on the other hand, it also invites people from then other countries being curious about to learn, well, how does Belgium do, for example, um, solve these problems? Or how do the Nordics um, tackle the questions around sustainability? And I think by that exchange and by creating these connections and that um, discussion around these different ways of doing, each of the organizations and the people behind it can map their proper solution based on the environment they're in. So I would say another aspect to that is, um, and you're absolutely right, I mean, there is a globalization, there is an increase of um, innovation, and that goes along with digitalization. So what we want to do with the inspiration of what's going on in the different countries and region is actually empowering the procurers to tackle better and grow with the change because um, we're not going back anymore. I think that world we're living in is changing quicker and quicker. So the role of procurement becomes more complex um, every day. So this is exactly the intention of transferring the learning experiences and adopting it from best practice um, communities into well, proper national frames and also um, well, organizational settings. Um, I hope that answers uh, your question because it's a super no, complex. No, no, no. It, it totally, no, it totally does, which, which makes me, uh, this is slightly off topic, but I think, I think you are going to be the perfect person to answer this. From a healthcare procurement lens, a very zoomed out lens, do you see healthcare simplifying or getting more complex? Uh, you know, I, I think we started off a thousand years ago or 500 years ago, very simple. And then it got very complex. I mean, I've studied the DSM and I've seen how complicated it can get. Where do you, what do you see as the future of healthcare? Do you see it getting simplified or more complex? 
I think it's getting way more um, complex due to the fact, and I think that is um, an interesting outcome, but having um, instead of um, generic, generic treatments, having more um, personalized medicine, having individualized um, patient pathways and um, care options. So I think just due to the fact that all this healthcare world gets more complex, this is exactly the reason why we need more structure in systems, in data, in being able to analyze that data, in being able to interpret and then take decisions from that data because of the complexity we're dealing in, I would say from a global perspective in regards to health, um, but also in a new view towards health. I mean, where do we want to move to? Looking into curing or preventing. So it's a whole shift around how we, um, I would say, understand health. And I think that's the complexity um, behind it. Also, where do we see healthcare systems moving? Where, how do we, as people um, and um, patients, how do we want to be part of that system? I think that all is changing because it is way more personalized and on demand. And that creates, I think, an enormous complexity in a system that is not ready to be more um, patient oriented or may more people oriented. Yeah, yeah, I, I fully hear you. And I think um, an increase in, you, like, in capitalism also leads to, uh, you know, abundance of where do we spend our money. So we make systems more complex sometimes um, as, as a byproduct. Yep, it's, it's all interconnected. Okay, so, so I'm almost um, getting to, my, to the last part. And then, you know, if you have anything else to add, uh, you can. But, but I see that this is the first ever healthcare procurement summit. And this is, this is super massively exciting. What are your long terms from this work that you're doing, Amisa? Because I've read up about you, you know, I've gone through your work and, and it looks like you're, you know, you're not someone who's going to stop here. It looks like you've got a long plan ahead of you. So if you could kind of like get us into where, where do you envision you and this summit and your work going? Hmm. I think you summarized that quite nicely and uh, you got the right um, gist of it. Um, for me, the summit is actually a starting point. This is like um, really where we can kick it off. So for us, it is not a one-time event. It's not um, a one-time gathering. It's really a kickoff of having these um, procurement professionals come together, feel that sense of, um, I would say, collectivism, and also the relationship building, the trust building. Therefore, we're so fond um, and cross fingers to have that event take place in person because this is crucial for us, these human connections that then longer last um, and we want to continue exchange on the um, skill development, on professionalization, um, the healthcare procurement sector, but also to have that story of what I was trying to refer to several times in our interview is to really position healthcare procurement as way more than just an administrative um, function, but like really a role that is more in the upper management, sitting in the boards, as Danny mentioned, because this to us is the essence of um, creating also financial health for healthcare organizations and driving the pathway to more sustainable healthcare organizations, which I personally believe is um, a core pillar or should be a core pillar and uh, healthcare organizations should pioneering this if we're speaking about health to be healthy organizations. And as you can imagine, that goes beyond procurement, but um, I see procurement in such a way as a game changer, and that needs also a transformation of the composition of the procurement teams, a new understanding of the role of procurers um, themselves, that being that responsibility uh, or having that responsibility of being a game changer with I think is a big responsibility of have, having the possibility also to create that impact. I think that requires um, to join the forces and to really drive that impact and there is a long way to go which is also beautiful in the sense of accompanying and guiding the transformation of 
the repositioning and also the the proper i would say understanding and sense of the purpose of procurement and maybe just a last um idea or concept of it why i believe it's so powerful because the procurement department i mean this is where we spend the money so if we wisely spend the money and we align that to very different um, angles if we're looking into how we spend it um, to actually um, safeguard the environment how do we spend it in order to make sure that we um, respect the social aspects and also how do we go into and create the right government structures and align to the principles that we become a healthy organization this is not only about um, let's say curing people this is also about making sure that people working in healthcare organizations are healthy and looking into more the well-being and a way more broader concept of what i would consider as health so as you can see there is a long journey um, ahead there is a long journey and, and i'm just going to ask you one last follow-up question to this it looks like it's a long journey and you know you're trying to hit multiple targets through this journey how do we ensure, Lisa, that the impact side of things, which I, I, I sense and I know that you're really uh, passionate about and careful about, how will you make sure that stays in the forefront of all things buying and selling healthcare? To me, this is, I mean, one is making sure to really connect with different stakeholders to make sure that this journey is aligned because this is not a pathway of one organization. This is like really a collective, um, I would say understanding the urge, seeing the necessity and wanting to make a change. And then I also see the collective as such to support each other because being on, I would say such a big transformative journey that needs support, that needs like, you know, being able to lean in from time to time and also re-evaluate um, of what really is the objective. So even though this is a super big mission um, where we want to head and there is many things to be done, I think it comes down to being very practical of what it is, what we can do now and really check in with the reality and what kind of resources we're having to go step by step. And in that sense, um, I also see the summit and therefore we want to move it from the visionary view also into the practicalities, a, I would say a gateway into the doing and not so much staying into the world. So for me, in my role as CEO of Health Park Europe Association, this is like really checking in and connecting with what is going on on the healthcare provider's point of view on one end. And on the other hand, so what's going on in the innovation space? So what is new? How can we change? I mean, looking into eco-design, looking into circularity, and sometimes it's not the fanciest solution. Sometimes it's the easiest solution, but no one has been thinking about. So this is really spreading the word, creating the awareness, and what touch basing with the people. I would say that to me is super important in order to make sure that we align with, I mean, our journey we want to have and also the impact we want to create as an ecosystem and with that said um, with the summit we also are going to kick off um, a digital community so after like having met in person we want to make sure that these connection actually can stay um, or even nourish further so this for us then leads to others Mm, I would say accelerating our mission and our impact by being able to share what they're doing with the community and having the community also being able to put in requests or get help and um, really start to um, interact better with each other. So this is like where we see ourselves as facilitator and as driver um, and hopefully being able at a certain point, uh, thanks to technology and digitalization, having that movement and having that um, infrastructure being in place to work it a bit more organically. Yeah, no, no, just, just listening to you, I feel like I can see the, you know, the wheels rolling already. So I, I see this a very clear road, complex, but clear. So, so yeah, so, so this sounds, this sounds really exciting. Is there anything else, Alisa, that, you know, you'd want to say to people who are going to listen to this and, you know, 
there's still like, should we really make the effort to go for the summit? Should we wait to read about it later and what happened? Like, like why, what would be one last thing you'd want to tell somebody who's still on the fence? Well, I, I really want to invite the procurers of healthcare organizations to come and to feel that spirit of being with others, because I think it sometimes can be quite lonely. So a community can help. And maybe even if it doesn't touch in the first end, I think the experience being in Brussels, meeting the people also after that long pandemic we had, it's such a different of, um, I would say, an energizer towards the work that people are doing, but also a push towards, well, how can I do certain things in a different way to actually help me alleviate um, my operational work? So I think Brussels in overall is always a visit worse, but even more like being there and having like the peer-to-peer -peer community of healthcare procurers, I think that is a fantastic opportunity to really meet and connect with the people which I believe because knowing many of them coming this is like lasting relationships um, that people are possible to actually build on spot. Amazing, amazing. This, this sounds really exciting uh, for anyone who's in the healthcare space. So, so thank you for sharing all of this. Good luck for what's to come. And we're excited to partner with you in every capacity possible. Yeah, so, thank, thank you also to, um, to Procurement League and particularly to the two of you. I mean, yeah. making, making us move, making us, uh, you know, really put that um, message out there because I think it is so important supporting that message and bringing that voice out there um, because I think it is it's not so much heard yet and um, we're talking a lot about healthcare procurement I think the importance has been rising um, due to the fact that we lived all the pandemic um, situation but I think there is way more we can do and um, this is for me very exciting to be a part actually of that journey well, this myself. Is